All right. My name is Jesse. I'm from PictureBandit.com, and this is ZBrush 3.1. I've decided to create a tutorial. I'm getting started. These are beginner questions that I had, and I'd hoped to find a video like this one. So, here it is. Um, on your startup screen, you'll notice that uh, they'll have a couple options of tools you can open. You'll have a polysphere, a head, a, a soldier, a man, and a dog, or something like that. Uh, for this video, go ahead and choose uh, Polysphere. Um, as you see here, this will be your default screen. Uh, when everything starts up, it should look pretty much like this with your uh, Polysphere and everything. Um, and if you if you uh, if you just run your mouse across there, left click and run across there, you'll see that you create some texture in your sphere. Um, first thing is Control Z. If you hit Control Z, that'll undo uh, mistakes you might have made. So Control Z will undo mistakes. Uh, one of the first uh, um, short keys I want to teach you is X. You hit X, creates a uh, it mirrors the uh, symmetry on the X axis, and it's real good for doing uh, bodies faces and characters and stuff like that. So after I clicked X um, and drag on my um, mesh, it creates symmetry on both sides. I'm just going to do Control Z and I do a little bit of that. A uh, uh, couple things about drawing onto your mesh. Obviously, uh, left clicking and dragging will create uh, geometry or add geometry to your, uh, to your mesh. If you hold down um, Alt key and left click and drag, it does the opposite. It takes away geometry from your mesh. So left click and add geometry and alt left click takes away geometry. Uh, one of the other ones is um, shift left click. If you do shift left click, it smooths out your geometry. So maybe you don't want to add or maybe you don't want to take away, you just kind of want to smooth it out a little bit. There you go shift and left click. Uh, with these options you want to release your uh, mouse button prior to releasing your alt or shift key. So I'm just going to get back to my polysphere here. Um, where we at? Uh, next thing is brush size and intensity. As you see if I just run my mouse on there it leaves a pretty big imprint. Um, go ahead and right click this will bring up a, a super power, uh, powerful options pop up. And first thing you see is draw size. You go ahead and reduce that a little bit and uh, you'll see the size. Your drawing size was uh, drastically reduced. Um, right click, it brings up that menu. You can see your intensity. You can raise it or lower it as you see fit. And this program is all about creativity. smooth it out or however you want to do it. So, um, right click and bring up your uh, options pop up. You have your intensity and your draw size. You can mess with the focal point and RBG intensity later on. Um, next is uh, brush. If you right click you have a currently is a standard brush. You click on that and you have a couple options here. I kind of like to snake hook myself, but you have move, inflate, layer. Uh, these are pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, gouging is just as, uh, as if you're holding down the uh, Alt key and uh, smoothing right here. Let's see where it's smoothing at. There it is. Smoothing. Um, it does the same as holding down the Shift key. The only difference is you can uh, change the intensity. When you hold down the Shift key and smooth uh, with your other option, it's going to smooth at the same. Uh, it's going to smooth at a different intensity. It's not going to smooth at the intensity of your regular brush. So, I think keep in mind, stay good. This is like a pretty cool little option there. You can kind of drag out horns or you know anything a tail or anything like that. Just click on the mesh and drag it out. And obviously, or, of course, you can change your intensity and uh, brush size along with that as well. Um, brush stroke. Right click. You come down to uh, stroke. You have uh, dots, freehand, and uh, drag uh, rectangular and the way this works let me go ahead and uh, change my brush back to uh, standard and the way this uh, 
rectangular works. Well, actually, freehand is pretty much like dots, except their dots are a lot closer, so it, uh, it makes it a little more smooth in a transition. Uh, so that's it for stroke. Let's go to alpha. If you right click, you come down here and you see uh, alpha. Right now it's off. This is pretty cool for creating scales and uh, texture and skin and stuff like that. Uh, I'll just choose one that actually looks like kind of crackly scales. See how it, uh, it drug it across like that? Well, if you come back to your stroke and you do drag uh, rectangular and you drag it, all it does is uh, it creates that stroke in the alpha mode and increases the size. That's pretty much it. And that's it for alphas and brushes. Kind of go through and change alpha however you want. So I'm going to take those off, leave my horns there for something later on. Uh, next thing you want to do is um, you might want to increase your resolution at some point throughout your uh, modeling. So if you hit uh, Control D, it'll actually increase the resolution. If you come over to this uh, rollout panel and click on geometry, you can see the uh, size of your uh, resolution right now. It's subdivided uh, five times. Um, you can move that back down to a lower level. So if I come up here and uh, create something at the uh, fifth level, I move it down to a low level and uh, and I modify my object somehow and then come back to the fifth level. That uh, subdivision, my um, whatever I uh, created on that level will stay the same. So I'm going to do that a little bit and I'm going to come over here, go back to three division and delete higher to get rid of some of those active points. So get rid of those stars. Three and delete higher. And that brings my active points back down. Um, so that's uh, increasing and decreasing resolution. Um, moving the object on the screen. Uh, if you go into this open space right here outside of your object and click and drag, you can rotate your object around. And for you to snap your object to an axis, all you have to do is hold shift. It'll snap, release your pointer, and now it's snapped to that uh, uh, the closest axis. So if I wanted to snap back to the front, I'll bring it closer to the front, hold shift, it snaps, release my button, and it's there for me to modify. Um, that's rotating. To move the object, uh, hold down Alt and click in the outside of the area. If for some reason your screen is being taken up, you can click in the open space or outside of this white box. So holding Alt and left clicking and holding and dragging uh, will move your object on your scene and releasing it, you're back to where you want it to be. Um, releasing the mouse. Uh, uh, scaling the object, if you hold Alt, left click in the open space, release Alt. Now going up and down will scale your object. And like I was saying earlier, if I get to this point to where it's uh, covering my whole scene, I can't click outside of my object, just click outside of your little box here. You can still rotate and uh, uh, Alt. Uh, hold Alt, click, release Alt, and uh, scale it back down to a smaller size. And you can always um, hold Alt and left click, oops, uh, left click once, and that'll bring it to uh, um, it'll maximize it into the window that you're uh, currently looking at. So I'm just gonna snap it back to center there. All right. So that was a uh, hold out, hold Alt uh, key while clicking uh, to move. Uh, hold Alt key, left click, and release Alt key and that will uh, allow you to scale. As long as you're holding the left uh, mouse down, it will allow you to scale in and out. All right, uh, next thing we're gonna talk about is masking. Uh, to mask an object, hold control and draw on the surface. That will allow, let me go back to my uh, standard mode here, turn my alpha off. If you hold down uh, control and draw on the surface, it will allow you to um, mask in. i to turn down my uh, draw size It will allow you to, uh, obviously you got to hold control and that will allow you to mask an area. Um, hold control and uh, uh, clicking off the object to reverse the mask. So if I hold control and click anywhere off the object, it's going to reverse the mask that I created. Say I want to create just the area that I mask off and that will allow you to go back and forth. Um, hold control and drag open space to remove the uh, mask that you created. So. Uh, Say I created a mask and uh, I wanted to get rid of it. Either way it is, I can uh, hold control and drag into open space and that will completely get rid of my mask that I created. Um, 
uh, Nexus control, hold control and drag onto the object. So if I'm here and I want to uh, mask this horn, I can hold control and drag it over that horn. And now I mask the horn. Uh, you can see that it masks some other things as well. Um, hold control and click within the mask to soften the mask selection. So I have this selection right here. I want to soften it a little bit by hold control and click anywhere within the mask parameters. It softens that selection and I can continue softening it as, uh, as far out as I want to go. Um, now this portion's mask, if I want to actually edit this portion, I would have to control and click outside of the object. Now I'm at a point where I can edit just this portion without affecting the mask off area. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is transposing say I want to uh, manipulate something on here I can actually use the uh, move scale and rotate uh, options to manipulate uh, portions of my mesh without um, using a freehand stroke and stuff like that uh, first thing you want to do is mask your area off which we have done so we've masked off this horn I want to manipulate um, uh, only mask which you want to trans uh, transpose so uh, I want to transpose just the horn but I have a lot of stuff uh, uh, Unmask, so all the stuff, or only have masks which you don't want to uh, transpose. So um, I'm going to leave it like that just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, and then the next thing you want to do before you start transposing is if you're using uh, X symmetry, uh, which we had started, see how you have uh, both dots there? Uh, you want to turn that off before you start your transposing. And the way you turn that off is just hit X again. So I'm in a position. I have my area masked off, and what I, you know, what I want to uh, transpose. And next thing to do is uh, we're gonna go over move scale and rotate. All you have to do is uh, come up here, click on move, and uh, drag along the axis of uh, what you want to transpose. Uh, once you have that, you can actually move it around by uh, clicking the outer circle. You can move it around however you want. Clicking the outer circle will help uh, move your transpose transpose tool. Clicking the inner circle will actually transpose your object. So now I'm on the move portion. I click the inner circle of this, uh, of the um, outside circle, and it and it moves it around. And as you can see, uh, if I turn this a little bit, I'm actually moving uh, all of my selection via intensity. You can click on the center one; it will move your uh, entire um, transpose tool and within uh, everything within its uh, limits. And the bottom one, obviously. It moves the bottom portion. Uh, same thing for scale. You can you can move this around. Say I didn't have it straight on there. I want to come back to this side and move it around a little bit. Maybe I want to move the ends or whatever. Uh, scale works the same. It's worked on the same basic. Uh, I want it bigger or smaller. And uh, rotate basically the same thing. Inner circle rotates, and uh, outer circle allows you to move your transpose tool around. And there you have it. Um, and then uh, you can hit uh, control, drag outside your box, everything's back in normal, and I'm back into draw mode, and I can start drawing. Um, that's pretty much it. I have some other tips. Uh, if you're going to export a mesh as an object, an OBJ file, and using your export tool over here, if you're going to export a mesh as an object um, to use within 3D Studio Max, make sure that your active points are below, uh, around, or between 200 and 500,000. 3D Studio Max will crash at around 500,000 points, active polygons. Uh, and so I, I suggest using about 200,000. And you can uh, change your resolution. If you, uh, if you want to use um, a higher resolution, I suggest going with a map and uh, and using um, using a map on a high scale and then uh, exporting your mesh itself in low in a low resolution. So um, also, uh, if you mess up your screen somehow and you click something and stuff disappears over here or you can't find something, you can always go to the top here where it says default Z script. Click that and it will reset your whole scene and put all the buttons and everything back the way it was uh, before you started. Another uh, neat trick is uh, you can come up here and click on load next uh, user interface. It will change the colors of your interface. I'm not sure if 
it does have the older versions or whatever. And um, uh, you can also change uh, user interface uh, uh, tool layouts. And uh, I prefer to just use the uh, standard default user interface, which it's all there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any specific questions, comment me. And uh, one last thing I wanted to say is uh, thank you for your subscriptions. Um, everything I do is uh, is pretty much for free. I just want to uh, be able to get that information out there to you guys. And uh, I like seeing everyone's involvement.